The myth of the gender pay gap reared its ugly head again this week. That old lie that women are somehow paid less than men for the same jobs in some kind of sexist campaign of oppression by the evil patriarchy. Yes, it was pushed by the government agency that gets funded to push it. And it was lapped up by all the old media. Even the evil right-wing Murdoch media that the left so love to hate. Front page of Brisbane's Courier Mail on Tuesday screamed, Gender pay shame file revealed the worst companies for pay inequity. Airlines, banks, mining firms and even fashion businesses have been named and shamed as some of the worst companies for paying Australian men significantly more than women. This report by the Workplace Gender Equality Agency, that's a government agency, folks, which means your tax dollars pay to fund it, and we're going to see some of their excellent work in a moment, but their research shows Virgin Australia was the worst performer of companies which employ 5,000 or more people with a pay gap of 41.7%. Qantas was not far behind with a gap of 37%, while the cult fitness brand Lorna Jane has a gender pay gap of 37.1%. Lorna Jane? Seriously? Sexism at Lorna Jane? Hmm. Are you suspicious of this dubious data yet? Oh, well, you should be. You see, we've made that big bad mistake again of letting bureaucrats and journalists play with statistics. They really shouldn't. First of all, the gap between what men earn and what women earn is due to many many factors, many, many variables. So it requires what real scientists would call a multivariate analysis. It's not just because of sexism and the patriarchy. For God's sake, journalists, Jordan Peterson famously schooled that UK Channel 4 journo about this six years ago in the interview that nearly broke the internet. Nearly 50 million views should have ended her career, but it didn't somehow. How could you possibly have missed it? Here in the UK, for example, let's take that as an example. The gender pay gap stands at just over 9%. You've got women at the BBC recently saying that the broadcaster is illegally paying them less than men to do the same job. You've got only seven women running the top FTSE 100 companies. Yeah. So it seems to a lot of women that they're still being dominated and excluded, to quote your words back to you. It does seem that way, but... Multivariate analysis of the pay gap indicate that it doesn't exist. But that's just so not do, true, you... is it? That's I mean, that 9% pay gap, that's a gap between median hourly earnings yeah. between men and women. But that multiple, exists. Yeah, but there's multiple reasons for that. One of them is gender, but it's not the only reason. Like, if you're a social scientist worth, worth your salt, you never do a univariate analysis. Like, yeah. you say, well, women in aggregate are paid less than men. Okay, well, then we break it down by age, we break it down by occupation, we break it down by interest, we break it down by personality. Wow, poor Kathy Newman from Britain's Channel 4 is intellectually over her head. Like most journalists, she has apparently very little understanding of statistics or social science and can't get her tiny brain around the idea that her sexist anti-male ideology, because that's what it is, might not be the reason for a gender pay gap. It might actually be partly due to many other factors, like, hmm, I don't know, women choosing different kinds of jobs, not something the government needs to fix. Or women being less likely to ask for a pay rise, something we probably should fix, but which has nothing to do with sexism coming from men. Despite not having this basic level of intellectual capability, I bet Kathy Newman earns pretty good money over at Channel 4. Anyway, back to the classroom. But you're saying basically it doesn't matter if women aren't getting to the top because that's what's skewing that gender pay gap, isn't it? You're saying, well, that's just a fact of not life. Women it aren't necessarily matter. going to get to the top. No, I'm not saying it doesn't matter either. You're saying, I'm it's saying a fact there are of multiple life. reasons for it. Yeah, but those reasons, why, why should women put up with those reasons? Why should, why should women, women be content not to get to the top? I'm not saying that they should put up with it. I'm saying that the claim that the wage gap between men and women is only due to sex is wrong. And it is wrong. There's no doubt about that. The multivariate analysis have been done. So well, I, I can give you, you an example. You keep on talking wait, about multivariate analysis. Let me give you an example. example. I'm saying that 9% pay gap exists. Yeah. Yeah. That's a gap between men and women. I'm not saying why it exists, but it exists. Now, yeah, if you you're a woman, that seems pretty unfair. You have to say why it exists. But do you agree that it's unfair? If you're a woman... Not necessarily. And on average, you're getting paid 9% less than a man. That's not fair, is it? It depends on why it's happening. 
Poor Jordan. Honestly, it's like watching Albert Einstein being interviewed by Lisa Wilkinson. It's just not a fair fight. She is so out of her depth. Poor old Kathy couldn't cope with the idea that some people, including women, might actually not want to take on high-paying, high-stress roles and may voluntarily step away from them. Shocking. Do you agree that you would be happy if that pay gap was eliminated completely? It because that's all the radical feminists are saying. It would depend on how it was eradicated and how the, how, how the disappearance of it was measured. And you're saying if you it's at the cost of men, that's a problem? Oh, there's all sorts of things that it could be at the cost of. It could even be at the cost of women's own interests. So... Because they might not be happy if they get equal pay. No, because it might interfere with other things that are causing the pay gap that women are choosing to like do. Like having well, children. Well, or choosing careers that actually happen to be paid less, which women do a lot of. But why shouldn't women have the right to choose not to have children or the right to choose they, those they, demanding careers? They do. They can. Yeah, that's fine. But you're saying that makes them unhappy, by and large. I'm saying that that... No, I'm not saying that. I'm, I, and I actually haven't said that so far. You're saying program. it makes them miserable. No, I said beginning. that what was making them miserable was having, part, was having weak partners. And once Jordan got back to talking about what was wrong with men, Kathy was happy once again. So that interview has been viewed 47 million times on YouTube, yet the old legacy media keep on wheeling out stories about the gender pay gap without asking the all-important why question. Someone who did ask the why question about six or so years ago right here in Australia, if any journalist would care to look it up and do their damn job, was former Senator David Leonhelm of the Libertarian Party. He asked it of the leaders of this workplace gender equality agency that we all pay for with our tax money, and which should be shut down, by the way. And this was at a Senate committee hearing after 2016 data came out. The agency reports a workplace gender pay gap comparing male full-time employees and female full-time employees. But male full-time employees work longer hours on average than female full-time employees. And the agency doesn't account for this when reporting a workplace gender pay gap. Sorry, what? Men work longer hours than women in full-time employment, but they don't even bother to take that into consideration? In other words, they are deliberately distorting the data to get the outcomes they want. Surely not. I'm sure the agency's Libby Lyons can explain. The gender pay gap as at May 2016 was 15.7%. It is a survey, it is a survey of employees, that information from the ABS. It's not a census. Um, and it's only conducted every two years. They only collect the data every two years. Um, what we do do is we annualise our figure to full-time. So we look at all part-time employees and full-time employees that may have worked part of a 12-month period and we, anal we annualise that data to take into account part-time hours. Um, and so therefore we're converting the part-time hours to full-time, if you like. Right, which has absolutely nothing to do with the question she was asked and has no relevance to this discussion about whether men are working longer hours than women and whether that's being recorded in their analysis. So do you take into account the fact that on average a male full-time employee works longer hours than a female full-time employee? N not directly, no. Oh, OK. So that would probably be the most basic thing to do. But what does this agency do all day? They sit around have cups of tea, but they don't do it. No, they don't do the most obvious thing. OK. What about if you did it on an hourly rate? What would be the gender hourly pay gap? Well, we don't have that data set. You don't have that data? No, because we ask for annualised salaries because, uh, and from our employers when they report their data in. But what do we pay this agency for again? Oh, that's right. We, we pay them to legitimise the gender pay gap argument of the left. So all they have to do is show the data that supports the lie that there is a gender pay gap based on sexism and the patriarchy. Actually getting to the truth, well, that would be in breach of their stated purpose. Got it. OK, so if, uh, if a woman was working 
fewer hours but earning the same uh, rate per hour as a man doing the same job, would that show up as a gender pay gap? No. But, well, then, in that case, you are looking at uh, hourly, at, at hourly rates. Um, Jenny Inbrud of Research and Analytics Executive Manager. So, um, we, do not, we do not collect the real hours that an employee might have worked. So, what we do collect is the hours that are specified in a contract and that is provided by organisations to us. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, I mean, uh, if you, you, do you annualise it on the assumption that men and women are working the same number of hours or is it ac actual earnings? It's actual earnings and we are unable to, we don't have the data to distinguish or to, to then unadjust for, or adjust for hours because mm. we, are, can, we, are not, we cannot collect the real hours that employees are worked. Okay, so l let's be clear here. They know that there's a pay gap, but they can't tell you if that's related to the number of hours worked. So anything they claim about a gender pay gap due to unfair pay based on sexism has zero basis in fact. The president of Argentina, Javier Malay, would have shut this agency down immediately after that and sacked a lot of them. These people are nothing but ideological warriors for the left, sponging off taxpayers and the productive people of our society. But not Australia, no, no. We don't sack people for incompetence. We're, we're too busy tearing down our competent people and making them as incompetent as everyone else so we can all look equal. Equal, so important to be equal. No, these guys lived on to fight another day and they gave us the BS data that has been lapped up by the media this week in headlines like this. And that is supposedly the Murdoch right-wing media, by the way. Imagine what our left-wing media are saying. God help us. <laughs> That horrific performance by the bureaucrats at the Workplace Gender Equality Agency didn't escape global attention, by the way. Comedian J.P. Sears noticed. Now, we're going to take a look at some uh, Australian <laughs> congressional hearings where the, the case for gender pay gap inequality from the woke side, it's just it's based on lunacy. You'll see this come out because what we have come to realize, if you are remotely a nuanced thinker, the gender pay gap isn't based on men and women get paid differently for the same jobs. It's different jobs pay differently. And forgive me here for acknowledging that there might be biological and psychological differences between men and women. Please forgive me. I know this is just blasphemy, but it turns out men tend to do different jobs and women tend to do different jobs. There's some overlap and there's also a lot of differentiation. Oh my God, you mean there's a difference between the preferences of men and women based on gender? Oh my God, what a revolutionary idea. It, on an hourly rate, what would be the gender hourly pay gap? Well, we don't have that data, Senator. You don't have that data? No, because we ask for annualised salaries because, uh, and from our employers when they report their data in. They didn't even analyse the hourly gender pay gap. Why is that? Well, there's not much of a gap, so we ignored that data. Then we made up data which shows a gap based on our made up data. Cool. It's a brilliant lady. I hope she gets paid less than the guy she's talking to. Yeah, probably not, JP. Probably not. We take the data and then we make up data about that data and that's what we go by. Cool. That is science. Now, there is a pay gap economist that I think we should hear from at this juncture because in spite of all the congressional stuff going on in Australia and other places, this gender pay gap economist seems to just cut through it all and understand it much better than people wearing glasses and carrying briefcase. Let's hear from him. This economist is Bill Burr. Why are you always dragging us into this I saw a woman a couple months back, professional soccer player, right? She goes on to ESPN or one of these sports channels and she starts bitching, going like, I don't understand, how come female athletes don't make as much as male professional athletes? 
right? And all of these men had to sit there and act like they didn't know what the answer was. <laughs> they had to sit there like dumbfounded, like, oh, uh, I don't know. Uh, why is that? Uh, that is a conundrum. I have, I have no idea. Which, by the way, this is from his uh, comedy special on Netflix, Bill Burr at Red Rocks, I think it was called. Literally, I'm sitting at home screaming at the TV because you don't sell any f***ing tickets! Well, that solves the riddle, especially as it relates to men and women professional athletes, why there is such a pay gap. It's called capitalism. If you generate more revenue, you are typically rewarded as such. If you don't sell many tickets, what do you expect to get paid from? This isn't a communist country where there's equal outcomes. By the way, all those outcomes are equally crappy for everybody. This is called capitalism. Yep. Comedian JPC is there with a little help from Bill Burr, bringing some sanity back to this insane idiocracy in which we all seem to live.